Tired of boring textbooks? Unleash your inner detective with a hilarious cat caper. That'll have you learning English without even realizing it. So, without further delay, let's embark on our narrative journey. Mittens, a sleek black cat with emerald eyes, surveyed his domain, the living room couch, with a regal air. He was the undisputed ruler of 123 Elm Street, his reign enforced with a healthy dose of purrs and head nudges. But today, a shadow loomed over his kingdom, a giant, orange monstrosity named Garfield had arrived. Garfield, a ginger cat, with a permanent case of the Mondays, was the unwelcome guest of Maya's visiting cousin, Emily. From the moment, the orange behemoth lumbered through the door, Mitten's new trouble was brewing. Garfield, with his bottomless stomach and insatiable laziness, threatened the delicate balance of power in the house. The first sign of Garfield's villainy came that evening. Maya, ever the doting pet parent, was doling out dinner portions. As Mittens daintily lapped up his gourmet tuna pate, Garfield, with a shameless meow that could curdle milk, launched himself onto the counter, sending a can of cat food clattering to the floor. Mittens! Maya exclaimed, mistaking the culprit in the ensuing chaos. Mittens, fuming, watched as Garfield sauntered away with a smug look on his furry face. This was war. The next morning, Garfield struck again. The object of his desire this time, the coveted sunbeam that streamed through the living room window. This patch of warmth was a sacred spot, one that Mittens meticulously claimed every morning for his afternoon nap. But Garfield, with the grace of a falling elephant, body slammed Mittens out of the way, sprawling himself across the patch like a furry orange rug. Enough was enough. Mittens, fueled by indignation and a healthy dose of catnip, devised a plan. His target, the source of Garfield's lounging pleasure, the recliner. This monstrosity, with its plush cushions and built-in footrest, was Garfield's ultimate napping throne. If Mittens could disable it, Garfield would be forced to vacate the sunbeam. The plan was audacious. The recliner had a complex system of buttons and levers, and Mittens, despite his feline intellect, was no engineer. But fueled by righteous anger, he launched himself onto the recliner's armrest. With a series of acrobatic leaps and a well-placed swat, he managed to hit a random button. The recliner lurched to life, emitting a series of roaring noises and flashing lights. Garfield, startled awake, yowled in surprise and tumbled onto the floor. The sunbeam was free. Mittens, panting from his exertion, basked in the warm patch of light, a triumphant glint in his emerald eyes. He had won the battle, but the war for 123 Elm Street was far from over. As Garfield grumbled from the floor, plotting his revenge, Mittens knew one thing for sure, life with a mischievous orange house guest was never going to be dull. Congratulations on completing A Tale of Two Kitties! Your dedication to learning English is truly commendable. Let's revisit the key words and phrases from our story to ensure they stick. A quick refresher to boost your English prowess. Number one, sleek, smooth and glossy, often used to describe well-groomed fur or hair. Number two, emerald, a rich green color, typically referring to a precious gemstone. Number three, domain, an area over which one has control or ownership. Number four, regal, having the characteristics of a monarch, royal. Number five, undisputed ruler, recognized or uncontested leader. Number six, purrs, the low, continuous, rumbling sounds made by a cat, indicating contentment. Number seven, shadow loomed, to appear as a large and often threatening presence. Number eight, monstrosity, something, especially a large building or creature, that is very large and unsightly. Number nine, 
permanent case, refers to a continual or unchanging state. Number 10, behemoth, something enormous in size or power. Number 11, brewing, here, indicates that something, usually trouble, is developing or forming. Number 12, bottomless, seemingly endless or inexhaustible. Number 13, insatiable, incapable of being satisfied. Number 14, threatened, indicated the potential to cause harm or danger. Number 15, delicate balance, a state of equilibrium that is easily disrupted. Number 16, villainy, wicked or criminal behavior. Number 17, doting, extremely and uncritically fond of someone, adoring. Number 18, doling out, to distribute in portions. Number 19, daintily, delicately and in a refined manner. Number 20, gourmet, a higher quality or special food. Number 21, shameless, lacking embarrassment or restraint, often inappropriately. Number 22, curdle milk, idiom, to cause to congeal or thicken, here, used metaphorically to suggest causing discomfort or disgust. Number 23, clattering, a continuous rattling sound as of hard objects falling or striking each other. Number 24, exclaimed, to say something suddenly and forcefully, usually due to surprise or strong emotion. Number 25, ensuing chaos, the disorder or confusion that follows an event. Number 26, fuming, expressing great anger. Number 27, sauntered, walked in a slow, relaxed manner, often in a confident way. Number 28, smug, having or showing an excessive pride in oneself or one's achievements. Number 29, struck again, to take action repeatedly or with renewed force. Number 30, sunbeam, a beam of sunlight that reaches the earth. Number 31, streamed, here, to flow or come in continuous supply. Number 32, sacred, regarded with great respect and reverence by a particular group, especially religious. Number 33, meticulously, showing great attention to detail, very careful and precise. Number 34, grace of a falling elephant, idiom, clumsy and uncoordinated movement. Number 35, body slammed, to forcefully throw or hit someone so that they fall to the ground. Number 36, sprawling, spread out over a large area in an untidy or irregular way. Number 37, enough was enough, phrase, used to say that one feels that something undesirable has continued long enough and should stop. Number 38, fueled by indignation, driven or motivated by a feeling of anger or annoyance caused by what is perceived as unfair treatment. Number 39, devised, to plan or invent a complex procedure, system, or mechanism by careful thought. Number 40, plush, richly luxurious and expensive. Number 41, forced to vacate, compelled to leave a place. Number 42, audacious, showing a willingness to take surprisingly bold risks. Number 43, complex, consisting of many different and connected parts. Number 44, fueled by righteous anger, motivated by a type of anger that is considered morally correct or justifiable. Number 45, acrobatic leaps, quick, agile jumps or springs, suggesting flexibility and coordination. Number 46, lurch to life, to start or activate suddenly and somewhat awkwardly. Number 47, whirring, a low, continuous, regular sound. Number 48, flashing lights, lights that blink on and off rapidly. Number 49, startled awake, to be suddenly awoken, usually by a sudden noise or movement. Number 50, yowled, to make a loud wailing cry, especially one of pain or distress. Number 51, tumbled, to fall suddenly, clumsily, or headlong. Number 52, panting, breathing heavily, typically after exertion. Number 53, basked, to revel in and enjoy warmth or appreciation. Number 54, triumphant, having won a battle or contest, victorious. Number 55, grumbled, complained in a bad-tempered way. Number 56, plotting his revenge, planning retaliation with careful thought to the details. Number 57, lumbered through, moved in a slow, heavy, awkward way. Number 58, culprit, the person or thing responsible for a fault or wrong. Number 59, coveted, greatly desired or envied. Number 60, lounging, lying, sitting, or standing in a relaxed or lazy way. Number 61, throne, a ceremonial chair used by a sovereign or a high-ranking person.
Thanks for joining us on this delightful journey through A Tale of Two Kitties. Rewatch to help these vocabularies stick forever. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more lessons. Check out the video on screen for more fun ways to learn English. See you next time.